Hey guys, welcome to episode 15 of Beyond Local. Today, we have a very familiar face, the head of SEO for LSEO.com, Kyle Cozy. Welcome. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely, buddy. Um, we're going to chat today about your recent post around what is search intent. And so uh, let's just kick it off. Let's dive right in about what is search intent. Sure. So that's why I wrote this article, because not a lot of people think about it when they're optimizing for their SEO. So search intent is the reason behind why a user searches something in Google. We all type something in and we expect to get an answer or a certain result back. And that's basically what the intent is. So Google tries to understand the intent of different searches, different keywords, so they can provide the best result. That's what they're in the business to do. So as SEOs, when we're optimizing websites or for certain keywords, we have to think about intent and the reason behind why people are searching. Is it earlier in the funnel? Is it later in the funnel? Are they looking for information? Are they looking to buy? What are they looking to do? We have to factor that in so we're showing them the right results. And so when someone types in a keyword, uh, your article suggests that based on Google's attempt to be a kind of a human mm -hmm. and judge the intent, the results would be different. So there's there's several different kinds of intent, if you will. What are they? Yeah, there's three main kinds of intent. Um, the first is informational. Again, people looking for information. Are they typing a question in? It's typically question-based queries or longer tail keywords where they're looking for certain results. For instance, I think in my article I use a, a, an outdoor cooler, for example. If someone's searching an outdoor cooler, which we're going to get into another type of intent, they're looking to buy. That's transactional intent. But for information, they may be looking for reviews or the different types of coolers that they could buy. That's information, and that might be an article like the five best types of outdoor coolers. The second one is navigational intent. That's someone specifically looking for a brand, let's say Amazon. They're going to type in Amazon. They're going to get, they could go to the Amazon homepage. They could go to different other, other different subdomains on Amazon's site. Maybe they're looking for a job from Amazon, things like that. They know exactly what they're looking for in terms of a brand or what they're trying to search. Um, and then that last one, like I said, is transactional, someone looking to buy or, or complete some kind of transactional uh, event online, whether that's trying to book a service or like I said, buy an item off an e-commerce web website. Two quick questions on that. So on the informational one, the question one, um, is that is that how folks optimize for that sort of position zero, which is that like the snippet box? Yep. And so in, in that instance, and it also actually, to the best of my understanding, represents what most of the answers are when you ask Amazon Alexa or Cortana uh, uh, or Siri a question, what you're really getting back is this informational type of result, correct? Yep. Yeah. I mean... Most of those queries have that answer box or position zero rich snippet. So that ultimately that's what you're trying to gain. Um, but again, the results under that are also as valuable. Maybe that rich snippet doesn't provide all of the information the user is looking for. So you could get clicks being under that answer box as well. But yeah, I mean, the yeah. main, it, that's, the, that's the gold standard. If you could get in that position zero or answer box for those informational based queries, then you're in the money. Yeah, and really just optimizing for for the Q&A yep. piece. And, and in just a quick reflection, I mean, you know, ask.com existed for many, many years before they basically just replaced their algorithm with Google's. And, and, and now they only, uh, to the best of my knowledge, provide kind of Google sponsored listings. But ask was the search engine you'd go to to get answers to questions. And so Google's, as they became more sophisticated, came up with using more of these rich snippets and more of those uh, you know, informational types of, of results. So I just wanted to get that out. The second thing real quick before we get into why this all matters is, um, okay, so I've been in this space for a long time. And, and you know, I mean, it's hard not to, to jump into some kind of conspiracy, you know, theory that Google's search results might be biased particularly to commercial types of terms. And so when I read your article, I thought, you know, there's really nothing in here that suggests 
say a bias. And I agree with you that Google has uh, all of the incentive in the world to just focus on relevance, making sure that they could do the best they can to um, guess, because that's what they're doing, uh, search intent. But anyway, the point though is on the transactional side, um, you know, that's where the bias, if there would be anyone, w would exist, particularly around like big box retailers getting the top results versus the mom and pop shops. Um, I'm not sure if you have a reflection on that, but for me, there's a part of me that says, you know, as they've evolved, they've, they've also optimized for their bottom line, mm -hmm. like how much money they're making as a company. So that transactional piece is really critical and it really becomes, so for the, for, for the moms and pops out there, would you suggest that maybe they need to spend more time on the informational side and, and try to compete there? Because once they get to the transactional, you know, the gazillion pound gorilla in the room is always going to be the Amazons and the Ebays and the, um, you know, the other big, uh, sort of, pure play e-tailers yeah for sure um i i think it's a mix so you, those smaller mom and pop shops definitely have to go after those longer tail keywords they're less competitive they could potentially rank for some of those types of terms however on the transactional side and it's funny because we're talking about intent they need to focus on the intent um like i said you might search running sneakers and you're not going to compete with nike.com or dicksportinggoods.com but there may be another way that you search for running sneakers that is less competitive, but the intent behind it is still the shop and Google's going to show shopping results. Mm -hmm. And they may, and Nike and Dick Sporting Goods may not, may not be optimizing for that lesser keyword, mm -hmm. but based on intent, Google still thinks people are, are looking to shop. So you could be competitive in that space as well. Just probably a less search volume keyword. Got it. And before we, before we go to the next piece of this, why is local intent not one of the primary types of intent? I think it, it is, but it's not necessarily to show up in the organic results. Google's going to populate the, uh, another type of rich snippet, which is the Google Map results or the Google My Business listing. So if you're searching for, let's say, running shoes again, you're going to get Nike, you're going to get the exporting goods, but underneath that, in the middle of the page, you might get the local map snippet showing where Dick's Sporting Goods is or how close it is. We're in Wilkes-Barre, we're probably going to get the Wilkes-Barre location. Um, if there's a Foot Locker in the mall, we're probably going to get that location. Um, so there is going to be some type of local snippet around it, um, but I don't think it's a main portion of the search intent. That actually clarifies it for me because I think if someone were to type in, you know, Scranton running shoes, the local intent is clear. But if someone types in running shoes, the local intent might be assumed, but you could be competing with national retailers in, in, in that instance. So, you know, if you're a local retailer, you know, using some of that sort of keyword, you could use uh, geographical based keywords. You could use other type of signals like, um, uh, zip codes and, and other things, but, but that's probably for a separate podcast. Yeah, so I, I would say to that point, if you're a local store that does sell running shoes or a certain type of item, just make sure you have your Google My Business up to date, that you, what type of items you sell, and, and you will populate in those searches. Awesome. So uh, we were talking about the different types of search intent. Uh, why does this all matter? Why is it important? It matters because if you don't optimize for the correct result you're not google may not even show you in in the result or if you are showing in the result you're not going to gain the click versus other people showing so you have to optimize for intent if it's informational based give them information if it's shopping based or e-commerce based make sure you your product page or you have a, a page on your website where someone could buy something or fill out a form or book a service um, making sure that you are, your pages and your site is optimized for that intent it is going to get you showing in those results. Again, I'll come back to Google wants to show the best results. So if you're not optimizing for what they intend to show, you're not going to show up possibly. They could show you to test. They may A-B test. Let's say they want to see if people are clicking the information result versus the shopping result. They may show you, but if you know that people are looking to buy and you're showing an information result, you're probably not going to get the clicks. Got it. Got it. 
um, and for folks watching, um, we'll add it to the description of this podcast, which will be a link to the post that you actually wrote on this, which is obviously much more detailed and comprehensive. One of the things, honestly, the, actually the part of the, of your blog post that I enjoyed the most, um, was really the next area I want to chat about, which is, um, the discovery piece of this. So how do you perform proper keyword research around intent? Yeah. So th there's really three aspects of that or three steps I would take. So you could do your basic keyword research. You could get all the terms that you may want to go after that have good search volume, have medium to low competition, maybe even high competition if you're a site that you know can compete. Um, but the, once you do that first part, the step to determine intent is to analyze the SERPs, um, the search results page. Google's your best friend in this instance. So just, typing in keywords yeah, into Google. Just make right. sure you go incognito or clear your cache because you don't want your old searches to influence what you're searching now. But search the keywords that you chose and, and see what types of results are popping up. Are they informational based? Are they transactional based? Um, and you'll be able to determine what type of pages you need on your site to go after those terms. Mm -hmm. The second aspect is to do some, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring paid media into this a little bit, but use your Google Ads account to use Google Keyword Planner um, and search the keywords there. See what the CPCs are. If if it's a high CPC, you know it's later in the funnel. That's probably more transactional based or the transactional intent. If it's a lower CPC, that's probably more informational based because you're not you're obviously not going to pay as much for the click for someone earlier in the funnel. So do that, do that research to determine the CPCs because that's going to help you determine some of the intent. And then the third part is to just monitor your own analytics and search console. Are people clicking on your landing page um, or your search result because you have the right, inf you have the right intent or the right pages showing up in Google or don't you? Um, if you're, if you're not seeing as many clicks or a high bounce rate, you may not have the right results. So mm -hmm. it'll get you going back and looking at your own data. Is, um, what about like a Google search suggest, or is that a good place to mine for, for different types of keywords that Google might be thinking that are related to the keyword that you typed in? Yeah. I, I, that's a good, that's a good, um, tactic for your first phase of that research is trying to determine what keywords you want to go after. Um, Obviously, you could use tools like SEMrush, Ahrefs, things like that to determine keywords. But if you're looking for synonyms of keywords or common other keywords, start typing something in Google and it's going to suggest different ones. Um, so you could potentially add those to your list when you're looking at the intent. Uh, one of my oldest friends in SEOs is Bruce Clay, uh, who's actually uh, been actually in the book that I wrote. I, I give him credit for actually coming up with the concept of search engine optimization way back in the late nineties. It was probably around 2008, somewhere around there, maybe 2010. I remember Bruce starting to talk about this idea of latent semantic indexing and, and keyword research. And, and, and actually it was, it was something that uh, I was like, whoa, that's pretty advanced. And, and the gist of it is, is that, you know, Google's a machine. Mm -hmm. It's not a person, but here's where it as a machine is actually smarter than a human. It has the ability through this latent semantic concept to be able to guesstimate and associate keywords with the root keywords that are typed in. So if somebody types in Carson Wentz, Google automatically knows that the searcher intent could be, I want more information on the Philadelphia Eagles um, schedule. Um, of course, I want more information on Carson Wentz, but maybe I'm also interested in, in information on you know, some of the popular wide receivers or running backs. And anyway, the, the gist of this, the reason I brought it up at this point is that from a keyword discovery standpoint, this is really about peeling back the onion yep. and whoever's doing the keyword research for you, it can't be a lazy endeavor. It can't be just Google search, you know, tool. What does it say? Add that to my campaign, add that to my campaign. We've got to really kind of peel back the onion and think through how Google's algorithm actually it's because it's so sophisticated is working these days and yep. it creates more upfront work, but to the point of this whole podcast and your, and your post, which is excellent. If anything, it's like the takeaway is 
guys, you got to do a lot more work and really kind of take some ownership and self-educating yourself on how sophisticated keyword discovery is when what we're trying to do is optimize for search intent. Yep. That's, that's definitely not a beginner class in SEO. This is definitely an advanced concept. So um, we talked about keyword research. Let's kind of conclude this podcast with how businesses can optimize for search intent. What kind of recommendations uh, do you have? Even, you know, feel f free to share some yeah. some case studies or anything that, that, you, that you've come yeah, across. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, the answer to that question is simple. Um, if you complete all the steps that we just talked about in the keyword research, how businesses can optimize it, optimize for searcher intent is just to make sure that you have your pages set up based on that intent. So what did you find in the keyword research? Do you need an informational page? Then create an informational page. Do you need a transactional page? Then create a transactional page. Um, just make sure that whatever keywords or key terms that you want to target as a business, you have the right page set up for what Google is showing for that, for that keyword. Um, and, and a real life example is one of our clients we work with a beauty brand and one of the key terms that we thought we could optimize for them was a green clay mask um, it's something like a woman or a man could put on their face to clear their pores things like that um, when we got that keyword and we actually did the research based on intent we noticed that it was informational based what how to make a green clay mask what are the top five green clay masks it wasn't necessarily how to buy. So where we thought it was a beauty retailer, oh, we could sell their green clay mask, just get their product page showing for it. Not the case. Um, we needed to create a blog post around it. What are the top five green clay masks? How to use a green clay mask? Um, how to make one? How to put it on? How to take it off? Things like that. So Google was showing informational based results for that keyword where as a human, we would assume someone typing green clay mask is looking to buy one online. So awesome. So anybody that's watching, if they wanted to get more information on how LSEO could help them, what's what would you suggest to them? Yeah, I mean, you could try and do it yourself. Um, there is a lot that goes into it. You'll need different tools. Um, you'll, you'll need to know you'll need the experts to know what they're looking at. Um, and it, it, it does require a lot of time. So if you do need help or um, need a third party to help you do it, reach out to us. We'll help. We'll be glad to help. Um, like I said, we've done it for many of our clients. We do it for our own website. So um, we're definitely experts when it comes to this. So we could get your website hitting on all cylinders if we optimize for the right keywords. Um, so I would say just reach out to us and we'd be happy to help. Super cool, man. Thank you so much. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. Uh, it was certainly one of my favorite. Uh, guess what? Next week is episode 16. 16 is my favorite number. Uh, so I can't wait. Uh, really appreciate you guys watching and uh, we'll see you next week.